Hey, Corey here with the Mentor and Engineer. We got a short video for you. We're gonna talk about cylinders. Oh, let me see cylinders. In this case, we're gonna talk about pneumatic cylinders. Now, most of my work has been done with hydraulic cylinders, which is an entirely different animal. Uh, with the same, not the same. Uh, which, by the way, if you design cylinders that articulate, so you got like a, a boom arm moving up or something of that nature, you need to check out my cylinder design kit. Yes, it's made for articulating applications of cylinders. It allows you to calculate easily where you should put your pitting points and uh, what your moment arm is at any time. Very cool, very useful. I still use it. I've been developing it over the last 20 years. You can do it in a matter of minutes instead of hours. One time it took me a day. Oof, that was long. Uh, so check that out in the mentoredengineer.com shop. Uh, and there's a link below that you can go and check that out. Very difficult to position and control the speed of a pneumatic cylinder. Why? Because air is compressible. Hydraulic fluid, water, not compressible. So if I move to a certain point, I can put a load on it and it'll stay there. I put a bigger load on it, it'll also stay in the same position. Air, no, nah, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll compress. It'll get smaller and smaller as I put more and more load on it. So that makes it very difficult to hold the position and maintain even speeds. So let's figure out what we can do to manage both of those problems. Well, let's talk about the speed first. How do we get nice, even speed? So what we need to do here is we need to limit the flow. So we're gonna use something called a flow control valve. This is a check valve that has a needle valve in parallel. When flowing one way, it'll freely flow across the check valve. When flowing the opposite way, it will hit the check valve and then have to go through the needle valve at a reduced rate. Uh, we call this metering. So there's two configurations that we can use. One is meter out, the other is meter in. Let's start with meter in. We don't wanna do this. What happens is, is we will meter the amount of flow that's coming from our air compressor into the cylinder. By metering in, we're gonna cause problems because friction is not accounted for. So air will come in, it'll compress, build up enough force to overcome the friction, and then expand, and then the pressure drops, and then more air has to come in and we get jumping. Go, dip, 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 dip. However, if we use metering out, we can put a flow control valve coming out of the cylinder at the barrel end, apply full pressure to the rod end, and then we can see that pressure, it'll be large, and then we'll have lesser pressure on the barrel end, but it'll compensate for the friction a lot better. And that allows us to evenly stroke the cylinder as you see here. So with the pneumatic cylinder, it's impossible to hold a mid-stroke position. Why? Because if I'm gonna push on this, uh, it's gonna have a certain position that it goes to, but I'm gonna be compressing that air and it's gonna move. If I add more force, it's gonna move some more because I can compress that even more. And then when I release it, it's gonna go back to its original position. But Corey, you told us that we could accurately position a cylinder mid-stroke. Yeah, I did, didn't I? So, how are we gonna do that? We're gonna take two cylinders and put them back to back so that the rods are sticking out. When we do that, we can stroke one cylinder and get, you know, say it's uh, three inches of stroke. Uh, we can stroke that and we get three inches. If we stroke the other cylinder as well, we can get six inches. And there you go, I stopped at mid-stroke. <laughs> So if we need another stopping position, we can get another one by using two different stroke cylinders. Let's say instead of two three inch stroke cylinders, we use a two inch and a four inch cylinder. All right, at this point I can stroke nothing and I get zero inches of stroke. I can extend the smaller one and get two inches of stroke. I can retract that one, extend the other one, I can get four inches of stroke. Or I could extend them both and get six inches of stroke. Now I've got two maintained positions. Well, that is it for this video. Hope you can use that on a design. Make sure you check out our articulating cylinder design kit and check out thementoredengineer.com. You got a lot of cool stuff there. Oh, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.